Next topic is how to create and sign transactions. But before we jump to that topic, we need to take care of one thing first. So if you remember, we have created the account class. So let's see that inside client and account. So if you remember, we are not writing the public and private key anywhere. So since we are going to sign the transaction, so instead of keeping track of our private and public key manually, so it's better to write it in, in a file. So let's go ahead and do that. So go to your database class, core database, database.py. All we need to do is create an account DB class here. So we can just copy and paste this exact setup. Replace blockchain DB with account DB. Since base class has all the methods to write, read, and delete the data, so we will use that. And all we need to do is just replace this file name with account so that when we write the data, it should write the data in the account file. It will create a new file if it is not there. And that's all. Now we can go back to our account.py, import the class that we just created, blockchain.backend.core.database.database, import account DB. And now here, all we need to do is just write the data. So do account DB dot write. And one more thing. So we are using the local variables right now, for example, for the private key and the public key. So let's replace those very uh, local variables with uh, the object. So change private key to self dot private key and do the same thing here where we are printing it and also change the public address to self dot public. Okay, let's quickly see we have changed it everywhere. All right, so now we can simply write this into our account file. ACCT, which is our object dot dictionary. And this should write the data into our account file. Okay, let's go ahead and test it. Uh, right now, I do not have any account file here. So once I'll run it, so it should create a new file and dump the private and public key that we are going to create now. So let's run it. Okay, so it has created the private key and the public key and it has also created the account file here. So now it should have the same private and public key in this file. And I can see the public key is there starting with 152 and the public address 1IC2. Let's run it one more time and it should keep writing the data. Okay, so the new public address is this and the private key is this. Let's check it out. And we have the new public address and the public, uh, sorry, the private key. All right, so we are done with this part. Let's jump into how to create and sign transactions. Signing a transaction is one of the most important feature in the Bitcoin blockchain. By adding your digital signature in the transaction, you are telling the miner that you own these coins and you are eligible to spend them. Miner will independently verify your digital signature and if it is valid, your transaction will go through. Otherwise, it will get rejected. So how do we create a digital signature? Go back to your transaction module. Go to blockchain directory, backend, core, and transaction. And create a new function called sign input. So this function takes three arguments, input index, private key and script public key.
So first step in signing a transaction is we need to calculate the signature hash. So how do we do that? For now, just pass it here and create a new function called signature hash. Sig hash. And this function takes two arguments as input. Your input index. And script public key. And add a pass here as well. So let's call this function here. Z, which is your signature hash. Self dot signature hash pass input index and script public key. Script public key. Let's go back to signature hash. So how do we create a signature hash? Creating a signature hash is not that difficult. In fact, we have already seen that when we created the transaction ID. So basically, what do we need to do to create a signature hash is we need to convert all the fields in white form first. And let's look at uh, the transaction object. So this is the object that we have. First, we need to convert the version number and then the transaction input object and then the transaction output object and the log time itself. And since these are object itself, so whatever variables are inside these objects, we need to convert them into byte form as well. We have already seen that in transaction ID, but uh, just a recap. So let's do that. Go back to sig hash function and start converting it. Declare a variable string as here and int to little Indian. First convert the version number self dot version and it takes four bytes. And the next is plus equals to encode. The next object is transaction input. So we need to encode the length first that how many transaction inputs are there. So let's do that. Length self dot tx ins. And now we are going to convert all the transaction input objects. So declare a for loop here, i for index, ex underscore in for transaction input object, and enumerate to self dot tx ins. Now if i equals to the index that we have passed, go inside the loop and do string plus equals to create a transaction input object and pass px underscore in it takes previous transaction hash as an input tx and then previous index tx in dot index and next is script signature. So which would be script public key in this case. And we don't need to pass the sequence uh, because it's already there in the object. So let me show you here. Yeah, sequence is already defined here. So we don't need to pass it. So until here, we have just created the transaction input object. Next is call the serialize function to convert it into byte format. So this function is already defined here. It will convert everything into byte format and return the result. And that result will go in the string variable that we have defined here. Now copy this and define the else part. In the else part, there won't be script public key. So let's remove that. And let me explain why is that. Open up your blockchain file. Select everything and convert it into JSON format. For example, this transaction belongs to us. It is locked to our public key. And uh, this transaction also, it is locked to our public key. And we want to transfer 900 Bitcoins to somebody. 
okay so we know that one transaction is not enough because this transaction has only 500 bitcoins so in order to transfer 900 bitcoins we need to combine at least two transactions so 500 in this transaction and 500 in this transaction so we will combine those two transactions and then we will sign them and that's exactly what we are doing here and also each transaction has the script public key right and that script public key goes here right here so this is where this public script public key is coming from so now we have selected two inputs right so we can sign each input one by one so first it will sign the first input with its script public key then serialize it and the second transaction will go into its else part because we can sign only one at a time and then again we will call the sig hash function with the second transactions input index when the index matches here it will sign the second transaction with its public key script public key serialize it and then the first transaction will go here right and it will serialize it and that's how it works i hope it is clear in the next step we are going to uh, encode the length for our output so let's go ahead copy this part and do tx outs and also run the for loop here to convert the transaction output object so for tx out in self dot tx outs and do string plus equals to tx out dot serialize and this will convert the object into byte notation and concatenate everything and the final step is let's convert the lock time as well into little indian self dot lock time and we know lock time takes four bytes to store and the only difference between when we created the transaction id and the signature hash is we are adding one more thing here that is a uh, hash type so let's define that variable first define hash type here which is one numeric format and and convert this hash type into little endian so let's go ahead and do that s plus equals to int to little endian sig hash all it takes four bytes sig hash all is the hash type this is to specify what the signature is authorizing the signature can authorize this input to go with all other inputs and outputs however there are other hash types out there since we are doing the bitcoin implementation this is the most widely used that's the reason we are using this one in the next step we are going to convert this into double hash so let's go ahead and do that hash 256 and hash 256 and the string that we have created in the final step we will return the signature hash do int from bytes and the h256 that we have just created convert it into big endian and this will give us the result so this is the signature hash creating signature hash or z was the most complicated part in the transaction input signing uh, process so now in the next step we are going to create the signature itself so let's go ahead and do that define der and uh, then private key so this private key is actually the object and it is coming from the elliptic curve library and do sign this is another function to sign the transaction so let's go ahead and do sign and z is that we just calculated in our previous uh, step and der and now we have the signature there is one more step to that so let's do sig equals to der plus sig hash all sig hash all convert it into bytes in big endian big endian and this is our signature and uh, we need one more thing so that is our 
public uh, key and when we have the private key we can easily create our public key from that this is no different uh, than what we have done when we created the account but we have this function defined inside the elliptical as well so we'll make use of that so let's do sec that means it is a compressed public key so do private e dot point dot sec and now we have the compressed public key so in the next step we are simply gonna assign the signature that we just created to our inputs script signature so let's go ahead and define this self dot exins and the index for which transaction index we are adding the signature define that index and script signature script underscore sig equals to create a script object here script and then pass sig which is our signature and the public key and that's it we have successfully signed our transaction